uh, State Police Crime Lab Springfield Satellite Facility. Uh, my name is Major Joe Mason. I am the commanding officer of the Crime Lab. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the Chief Science Officer and Laboratory Director, Kristen Sullivan, who's here up, up to my left. Um, in a moment I'll introduce the Colonel, but in a, I, I'd like to just give you a brief background uh, of this facility and our Crime Lab system overall. Uh, the Springfield Laboratory is one of nine satellite state police laboratory facilities situated geographically across the Commonwealth. Others are located in Bourne, Lakeville, Boston, Danvers, North Sudbury, Devons, Worcester, and Sudbury. These nine facilities, combined with our central lab in Maynard, make up the Massachusetts State Police Crime Lab system. The Crime Lab presently has 283 Department of State Police members assigned to it, 193 of which are non-sworn members and 90 are sworn members. I'd like you to know that these are highly trained and skilled subject matter experts in their field. Lab-wide, we offer crime scene response where we identify, collect, document, and preserve physical evidence located at crime scenes. We also offer laboratory forensic analysis in the disciplines of DNA, drugs, criminalistics, bomb trace and arson, toxicology, post-mortem toxicology, computer forensics, ballistics, as well as fingerprints, footwear, and tire impressions. We also calibrate all of the breath test machines used by police departments across the Commonwealth. Our services assist investigators with identifying perpetrators as well as victims. All of these disciplines, except for postmortem toxicology and the Office of Alcohol Testing, are accredited by the American Society of Crime Lab Directors and Laboratory Accreditation Board. When we originally moved into the facility in 2007, we occupied about half of this space. At that time, we provided intake, evidence intake services, as well as analysis and ballistics, crime scene services, and criminalistics. And as you're about to hear uh, from the Colonel, we've, we've expanded into a drug lab. We're happy and proud to be able to show you this facility today. And I'd like to close by saying that we take a tremendous amount of pride in our work and constantly strive to provide the best forensic services possible. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Superintendent of the Mass State Police, Colonel Alden. Thanks very much, Joe. Um, I, I certainly want to begin by acknowledging uh, some very important people that are here with us uh, this morning. We're situated, obviously, in the uh, city of Springfield, uh, the largest city here in western Massachusetts, and I'm honored to have uh, Mayor Sarno with us uh, joining us. Uh, the mayor's been a great partner with the Springfield Police Department of the Massachusetts State Police for a long time, and we're grateful for uh, his uh, hosting uh, us in his uh, wonderful city. I also want to acknowledge uh, District Attorney Jim Orenstein of the Hamden County District Attorney's Office. Jim, thank you for being with us. And District Attorney Dave Sullivan from Hampshire County. And I think you know uh, District Attorney Dave Capeless from Berkshire County would be with us, but he's actually in the midst of a homicide trial here in Hamden County, a very important trial. So. These are all uh, partners in really these uh, district attorneys, the police chiefs, police departments in Western Massachusetts uh, uh, deserve this facility that we are going to take you through here today. You know, uh, back in 2012, a month after having been appointed to the position of Colonel and Superintendent in the State Police, I uh, had to stand up and announce uh, the very disturbing results that we found at the Hinton Laboratory and the impact that that had across the state of Massachusetts. And in August of 2012, I said well, we would fix that, that we would identify the issues that were outstanding, fix the procedures, fix the policies, get the right people in place, and get that under the umbrella of the state police. And I'm honored to say that this is another step in that entire process here today. This is indeed a fulfillment of a promise that the state police made to our partners, our district attorneys and our local police partners in Western Massachusetts, that we would have a facility that would be here in our neighborhood uh, in Western Mass so that it was convenient and they would gain the same professional product 
that, that we offer to our police departments and, and counties across the state of Massachusetts. This laboratory, the State Police Laboratory, uh, in 2009 was accredited by the American Society of Crime Laboratory Directors. That's a, na uh, a national accreditation standard that uh, we were very proud and worked very hard towards achieving. Last year, we even ratcheted that up one more notch when we gained ISO, or International Standards Organization, accreditation. That's a national standard now that looks at the state police in the product that we do here for uh, our criminal justice purposes across the state. So whether it's in DNA testing, drug laboratory testing, crime scene services, uh, forensics, ballistics, all of that is housed uh, in, in this facility. So we're very, very proud of that today as well. You know, this particular facility opened in 2007 in a much smaller capacity, housing some of the district attorney here in Hamden County's uh, investigative uh, resources. And then ultimately we moved crime scene services, criminalistics, and a ballistics unit into this building. All of those units go out and service nothing but uh, police services and prosecution and criminal justice services here in the four counties of western Massachusetts. So from Greenfield to Pittsfield and Springfield to Northampton, it's based all here. Let me talk just briefly about this facility and what we do here. You know, uh, Prior to 2012, all of the drug testing uh, for Western Massachusetts was performed by the Department of Public Health in a laboratory uh, situated on the campus of UMass Amherst, and then in the Hinton Laboratory in Jamaica Plain. Those have all been transitioned now over and under the umbrella of this great accreditation that the state police provides. So everything that we did in Amherst in the past is now going to be situated here, if not completely today, by the end of the year here in Springfield. The um, drugs that uh, were typically tested at the uh, UMass laboratory went out to the um, UMass Drugs and Abuse Lab in Worcester in the interim to cover this uh, period from the time that laboratory closed at Amherst to the period in which we are now uh, here today and accepting all of that. So I want to extend a, uh, my gratitude to Governor Patrick and members of the legislature who recognize the problems, the shortcomings, uh, gave us the uh, funding to buy the necessary equipment to make the necessary hirings for our laboratories in Sudbury and Maynard and, and now out here in Springfield. We couldn't have done it without their support uh, along the way as well. I also want to thank uh, Bruce Tebow from DCAM and the Division of uh, Capital Asset Management. Uh, they have been a tremendous partner to the state police in acquiring this facility, building it out, renovating it, and now you'll see shortly on our tour uh, all of the sophisticated uh, and technical uh, scientific equipment that's been uh, acquired here to help us uh, do our jobs in a, in a better fashion. We have uh, 14,000 square feet here in, in this building. 5,000 of that will be devoted to uh, our drug lab just servicing those Western Massachusetts Police Departments. By the end of this year, all Western Mass drug analysis will be performed uh, right here in this particular building. At the present time, we're accepting uh, drugs from Berkshire County, Hampshire, and Franklin. And uh, by January 1st, we intend to have Hamden County, our largest uh, population center out here, on board and everything filtered to this facility as, as well. Uh, once up and running at capacity, we an anticipate that we'll be handling between 140 and 150 cases that would be completed by our staff here in this facility. And just to give you a further breakdown, uh, just the, uh, the residual uh, testing that needs to be done from the Amherst backlog uh, amounts to 188 cases. Uh, our uh, Troop B state police uh, contributions to this laboratory will uh, account for about 73 cases a month. Uh, Berkshire County, 46 uh, cases. Franklin, 20. Hampshire, 32. And Hamden, 268. So this will be a very busy facility uh, as we continue to ratchet up the, uh, the operation. So I think uh, the enduring message here today is that Western Massachusetts is now part of a state-of-the-art forensic laboratory that is going to contribute and continue to contribute to criminal justice here in the western part of the state just as we have done in the eastern district as well. So I know you'll have some questions. I'm going to hold those. What I'd like to do at this point 
is just uh, ask if uh, Mayor Sarno and our district attorneys uh, would make a couple of comments about the contribution of this uh, laboratory to Western Mass. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it's great collaboration that we had with the State Police, our Springfield Police Department, District Attorney Jim, James Ornstein, and of course having a homegrown superintendent, Colonel Lawton, we deeply appreciate that. These cities not only would service across the uh, eastern part of the state, but also central western Mass, and we deeply appreciate that. This all goes to when individuals or families are hit uh, with a crime situation, Swift justice that can follow through the investigations that take place. And having this here in Springfield and going to continue cooperation and great relationship with our state police and police uh, departments, I'm deeply appreciative of working with DA Ornstein and DA Sullivan. Uh, this will help us continue to beat back the small percentage of negative elements that are on our streets. Thank you so much, and thank you for being in the city of Springfield. And I want to echo uh, thank you to the uh, Patrick administration and to Colonel Alvin for really making this a priority for justice in, in Western Mass and making sure that it's here. This will be the crown jewel of uh, law enforcement uh, prosecution. Uh, without uh, good forensics uh, that are uh, at state-of-the-art labs, we can't solve crimes and we can't successfully prosecute them. So this will obviously be a uh, real step forward. It means that all our law enforcement uh, agencies, whether it's Mass State Police or local police, now have this facility in their backyard so they can be efficient, not be wasting time traveling into Boston, but now have this uh, right at their fingertips. And I know that uh, this state-of-the-art lab will produce justice and will produce very good prosecutions in the future. And I just want to thank you again, Colonel. Uh, to uh, echo some of what you've heard, uh, we couldn't be happier to have this drug lab, the drug unit, opening up here in Springfield. Uh, this really will be a boom to all participants, uh, people involved with the criminal justice system. From the police departments who will be able to, with far more ease, uh, bring the drugs that need to be analyzed to a local lab here in Springfield, to the prosecutors and defense counsel who are looking for the timely and accurate uh, results of the analyses that are done here. Uh, this is going to be beneficial for uh, to expedite trials. The analysts who do the work in this lab will only have to now travel from this lab a few miles down the, the road if they've got to go to the Hammond County Courthouse, which is the courthouse at which most of this work is going to be relevant. So all of this is going to, number one, expedite the testing and the accurate results of, of uh, the analyses. Uh, in, in addition to that, uh, we also have the confidence that the people who are going to be working here will be of the utmost professionalism and confidence so that we can have full uh, reliability with respect to their results. We're looking forward to working with them. We couldn't be happier to have them here in Springfield. Thank you, Colonel. Yeah, I'm going to take a few questions if you have some. What was, I, I got a little lost when you were going through those numbers. What, what, what do you anticipate the number of cases per month you'll be testing here in the, in the drug lab? Right. So the uh, laboratory itself will be able to process uh, on, on the order of 140 to 150 cases uh, per month um, in the drug operation. Right. And that's after the after you start sending the Hamden County ones here, right? That's yes. Okay. Yes, and that should be completed by the uh, the, the end of the year. And the backlog from the closure at Amherst, and that's been closed for what, about two years now, correct? It'll be two years in uh, roughly January. And so you're still dealing, you're dealing with a backlog? We are. We are that? still dealing with the backlog uh, from the Amherst Laboratory. Uh, those were all sent to uh, a UMass Drug Lab in Worcester at the time, uh, where they've continued to process those. Um, but we're happy to get those back now uh, mainstreamed under state police umbrella. And how, how many cases roughly, do you know what the backlog is on that? About 188. 188. Yes, sir. How many of the staff from the two close labs are now working under the state police labs? Those, uh, these are all new hires uh, that we have here in our laboratory. Um, and, uh, you know, we wanted to do that for a number of reasons, but certainly the accreditation, uh, you know, protocol required certain qualifications and, 
we thought it was best that we start this uh, fresh here in, in our laboratory. Second question, do you support mandatory drug testing for that? For the, uh, for the technicians, for the yeah, that, that's an issue obviously that we have to deal with the uh, representative union of, of, of the um, um, staff. Uh, we clearly have that uh, regulation uh, for regular state police uniform people, and uh, you're, you know, more directly to your question, yes, I, I, I would support that. How many civilian employees were in this lab? In a drug laboratory. Yeah. Uh, the drug laboratory right now we have five. Five. And how many worked in Amherst, you know? It was four, I believe, four. in Amherst. Right. Yes, sir. Do you think this facility will restore any confidence in the information in the past couple of years? Well, you know, I, I would I would point you back to the uh, Inspector General's re report on the Hinton Laboratory and the recommendations that were made uh, in the aftermath of that. I think we've answered, not only have we answered them, but those, those regulations that accreditation really that he focused on was in place here long before uh, the legislature decided to move the DPH facility over to the state police. So I'm confident that we have the leadership, we have the policies, and now we have the international accreditation to ensure all of those concerns. Anything else? So if you like, we're going to uh, offer the opportunity to go through and take a look at every one of these uh, facilities from ballistics down to the, the drug lab. Uh, and uh, you can ask any questions you want of uh, the supervisors that are there in the offices. Thanks very much for coming out. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.